out of the game. Hi, I'm Kelsa Dickey, the CEO of the Financial Coach Academy and my financial coaching business, Fiscal Fitness Phoenix. My coaching journey began more than a decade ago with me helping people for free from my dining room table. What was once a little business of mine has grown into a seven-figure company that employs a team of people. My goal is simple, to help you fall more and more in love with financial coaching. I believe financial coaching is the most rewarding way to make a living. If you are an aspiring financial coach or have been coaching for years, I'm here to help you create a business you love that gets your clients massive results. Let's get to it. Hey, Financial Coach, welcome to episode 62 of the pod. We're going to talk about financial coaching for business owners today, and I'm really excited to dive into today's topic. It will actually take us a few episodes to explore fully. Our journey will be talking about how to financially coach a client who owns their own business. We'll discuss how to separate business and personal finances, the difference between cash flow and what's deductible on their taxes, and how to pay yourself as a business owner. These episodes should be relevant for you if you're a business owner, but also for fellow financial coaches who coach small business owners. You'll be able to see how I guide my clients through these concepts. Like I said, it will take three episodes to truly conquer these concepts because laying a solid foundation for your business finances is a multi-step process. Most financial advice that I see online for this topic, unfortunately, tends to miss the mark. At least that's true for the business owners that I help every day. And it's not to say that the advice online is wrong. It's that it's not enough. It's just not practical enough. It's too higher level, and we're going to really get into it in these episodes. We're going to move money around. We're going to get really tactical on how to help a business owner set up their business finances, and we're going to make sure we do it with greater success. So we are going to get super tactical. Like I said, we're going to break this down step by step exactly how I do it with my business clients literally every week during coaching sessions. Today will be an introduction of why I have found this process works best, what you're likely going to see from a business client, and the philosophy behind this method. Next episode, I'll share a resource with you that you'll want to download that will help guide the technical and financial steps of this process, which is when we'll really uh, get into the weeds of everything in the next two episodes. So why are we talking about this? I want business owners to be compensated for the hard work they're putting in every day. And most business owners want this too. Too many business owners are hearing manifestation fluff messages about you have to believe you can make money to make money and just charge more or charge your worth. And in the coaching space, the result that this ends up creating is a hyper focus on making money. This, of course, then creates a focus on revenue, money coming into the business. But there's a massive shortage of conversations around how to actually pay yourself consistently. What the business makes is not the same as what you, the business owner, makes. And we're going to talk about the latter before more conversations about this part of managing the business finances are needed, okay? So that's not to say that your mindset as a business owner isn't important. That's not to say mindset isn't important when it comes to generating money in your business. I just think that's only one piece of the puzzle, and this is the other piece, and it's a really important piece that is oftentimes missed or glossed over or skipped entirely. Another reason this is essential is because no matter what problem a business client comes to me with, this is where we start every time. Because until we complete this process, we actually don't know if what they're thinking is wrong is really wrong. We have to confirm where the problem lies before we risk spending months solving a problem they may not even have existing. Sometimes it is a revenue issue. Sometimes it's a spending issue. Sometimes it's a pricing issue. And other times it's a business model flaw. All of these things can be addressed through this process that I'm going to outline over these few episodes. The end result isn't just that a business owner is paying themselves, but that they have total awareness of what they need to do going forward to have a successful business. When do we tackle this? In my programming at Fiscal Fitness, this concept is introduced as step one. So this is done very early in the process of coaching so we can better see what we're working with and we can provide the client with really specific strategies and coaching based on where they are. So who is this best for? 
most of my business clients are small business owners. They typically have smaller teams, so maybe a few employees or contractors or even less. Oftentimes, they're solopreneurs. They are still the person who primarily manages the business finances. So they're the ones paying the bills, managing cash flow, keeping an eye on the revenue and those types of things. So we tend to work hands on with the business owner. Some of them do have a bookkeeper and an accountant already, but not all of them when they first come to us. And I will say that whether they have a bookkeeper or accountant already tends to be irrelevant from my experience on whether or not they commingle or separate their business and personal finances. I can't imagine being a bookkeeper for a business where everything is commingled, but it happens often because we see it often. So this concept will be focused towards smaller service-based businesses. The end result that we are shooting for is clear separation between business and personal expenses and a clear flow between the two. We want to see a paycheck designed and executed. This is the foundation of financial coaching for our business owner clients. So I want to give a quick disclaimer as we dive into this topic over these episodes. If you are an accountant or CPA, I know that your understanding of how these things work is extremely thorough. I want to mention right up front that the way I explain these concepts is not for other accountants, but for my clients who oftentimes don't have an even basic understanding of these concepts, let alone an advanced one. I promise you that I know this stuff is more complicated than how I explain it in this series. These trainings are from the perspective of, here's how you talk with your clients about this stuff, and not, here's how you talk with other financial professionals about this stuff. And most of my clients don't care about how something is calculated or, you know, deducted on their taxes, just that it's relevant to them and why it's relevant to them. The how we leave up to their accountant. And that's because every single one of my business clients will have an accountant after we've started working together. None of my clients should be doing their taxes themselves, especially at first. And it ends up being one of those things that once they get one, they just always have one, right? Think of this episode as sort of like the bedside manner of financial professionals. Yes, it is more complicated than this. And when we're together, you and I, financial professional to financial professional, we can geek out on all that stuff all day, I'm sure. But when we're talking with our clients, you've heard me say this dozens of times now throughout this podcast. Our job is to meet them where they're at. And that is true when it comes to the deductibility of some business expenses, which is going to be a key element of this topic over the next few episodes. So that's why when creating a coaching concept, I always start by getting into the mind of my client. What do they know? What don't they know? What have they heard? How are they feeling? What might they need to unlearn? What have they tried or what have they been doing instead? And this is crucial because if my job is to meet them where they're at, I do that by asking these questions. So let's start there. When our business clients first come to us, they will often express a problem or challenge they're having in their business. That can be, I don't have enough clients, or I have to get my spending under control, or I need to increase my revenue, right? But what's actually happening is all too often not as clear as that. It's not as obvious as what they say. Business owners can come to us saying one thing, but when we dig into it, they don't actually know with total certainty what the actual problem is. It's all a guess, and that's because they're not able to see their numbers clearly. There is often a lot of commingling of business and personal finances happening. And I want you to think of commingling as a spectrum. You have some business owners who have one checking account for all business and for all personal expenses at the exact same time. So there is zero separation between the two. That's one end of the of the spectrum, right? And then the other end is the business owner who does have separation and manages each account very strictly and precisely. Expenses are never paid out of the wrong account. That, of course, is the ideal end of the spectrum. 
What is more likely though, from my experience, are business owners who are somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. They have two accounts, one for business and one for personal, but sometimes they pay things out of the wrong account. Sometimes they're just guessing. Sometimes they pay bills out of whatever account has money in it. And there's really no clean system for managing these two accounts properly. The results are typically a stressed and frustrated business owner who can't make really smart or strategic decisions for their business or their personal life, not because they're not a smart or strategic person, but because of the chaos occurring between these two accounts. If you think about it, you and I know that the majority of people do not budget. They do not manage their money well, and they live paycheck to paycheck, and they spend on average four and a half hours per year managing their money. Four and a half hours per year. That blows my mind. I can spend that in a week easily. If I'm having a week where I geek out on money, then and I'm crunching numbers and I'm playing around with my spreadsheets and stuff, four and a half hours, easy, right? That is what most people spend per year managing their money. And then they start a business and experience all of those same things, but now in two accounts and in two areas of their life, business and personal. They don't have the skill set with their personal finances, which means they don't have the skills with their business finances either. And business finances can be more complex. There are more moving parts and there's a greater level of skill required. So when I see often, excuse me, so what I see often are business owners who don't know which way is up. They don't know their revenue profit, expenses, or break even. They aren't paying themselves regularly or consistently. They're doing a lot of transfers. Um, and whenever their personal or business finances are getting low, they sort of just borrow from one to the other and like that kind of thing. So they experience a lot of disorganization. Things feel really clunky and they're in reactionary mode oftentimes. They may come to coaching for one thing when the reality is there are a lot of other things happening too. So they aren't saving for taxes or they're behind on taxes. They don't have solid organizational systems in place for receipts or other important documents. They don't know how much they need to pay themselves or how much they need to make. They don't know if their pricing model is actually viable. They don't know how many clients they need to make ends meet. And they don't know what their expenses or break even are. And tackling each one of these starts with creating separation between business and personal finances and the ability to pay yourself. And that's how I typically introduce it to my clients too. Because no matter what problem they have brought to me, we must first confirm that it's actually true. We have to confirm it's actually what's going on and that there isn't anything else also happening or that there isn't something else happening and it's actually not what they think, right? I'll typically tell the client something like, otherwise we can spend multiple sessions over many months solving a problem that doesn't actually exist and we don't want to do that. I will tell them our first step is to separate business and personal finances so that we can remove any chaos associated with managing them both. Then we will determine their paycheck amount and structure, and then we'll determine an estimate for their tax savings. Once we do those three things, and again, they are number one, separate business and personal finances. We can use that to determine two, a paycheck amount and cadence, and then use that to calculate three, a tax estimate. Once we do those three things, we will have a foundational understanding of their business that we can then interpret. From there, we can get really strategic with how we spend our time and the solutions we implement in future coaching sessions. Until we do these steps, we do not know with absolute certainty where the problem in their business is and neither do they. So we need clarity first and separating business and personal finances provides that clarity. I don't typically experience resistance to this step when I explain it to the client in this way. If there's any hesitation, it's typically related to simply not knowing how to do it. But I assure them that's why I'm here and that's what I do as their coach. So let's dive in, right? That's typically what I say. So let's look at a real life example as a case study before we get into the how of this process in the next episode. 
My client, James, is a perfect example of why this process is so powerful. James is a dad of four, an awesome husband, and a specialty coach for high school baseball players. These kids are some of the best. They're getting looked at by scouts and are scholarship-worthy athletes, right? They go to James for batting, uh, fielding, throwing, pitching, and agility-type skills around baseball. When James came to me, He was exhausted. He was working really hard and honestly had been for a while, yet he just couldn't seem to get his head above water. Things were good. It seemed his athletes and their parents loved him and business was better than he imagined it would be when he first started the business. But there was so much that wasn't great about it too. Money was really tight. He had some credit cards and sometimes he worried about paying bills and he was juggling things a lot. He'd look at his revenue for the month and wonder where it all went and why, if that's how much he had made, it wasn't easier. When he first came to me for help, he kept saying he needed to get his spending under control, and he was sure he spent too much, right? He kept thinking he just needed to make a little bit more or get a few more clients, so that's what he would do, only it didn't matter. No matter how many clients he got or how much he brought in, month after month, he just felt more tired and stressed. Together, we completed the first three steps of the game plan. One, we separated his business and personal finances and made sure that there was a solid plan in place for how to manage both of those things. He needed routine and ease. He needed to know that bills would be paid on time and that he'd have the money to cover everything. So that was step one. Next, with his personal financial plan outlined, he was able to take a consistent paycheck and on a set schedule that would cover those expenses. On payday, he made sure everything in his personal life was paid and handled so he wouldn't have to worry about it for two weeks. And then third, with that paycheck amount determined, we were able to determine an estimate for taxes so that he could begin setting that aside each month. Again, one less thing that was causing so much worry was now handled, right? His biggest expense, his own salary and the taxes for that were now accounted for. So with that expense, plus his other business expenses, he could now see it all much more clearly. By completing those steps, we shifted to creating a solid plan for his business finances too. Most importantly, we could now see with total certainty his monthly revenue target for his business, right? We had all of his personal expenses figured out, including a paycheck that was needed. We added that to his business along with all of his other business expenses to get a true target for his revenue. How much did he need to make in order to cover the business needs as well as his own paycheck, which again, covers his personal needs? We now knew that number, right? And what we discovered by knowing that number was a game changer, we realized that in order to hit that target each month with the pricing model he was using, he would need to coach 80 athletes individually each week. That's 80 coaching sessions per week. That's 80 hours of work per week just coaching athletes, not including the activities it takes to actually run the business, right? That is not realistic. That is not possible. It's not viable. Completing this process and knowing the number gave us massive clarity into the actual problem James was experiencing. It wasn't a spending problem like he thought. He could have trimmed his expenses down to nothing and it still wouldn't have been enough. He had a pricing issue. His business model, as established, was not viable. It was never going to give him what he needed. There was no amount of hard work or hustle that would have given him the outcome he was after. So this is when it's time to brainstorm and strategize. And this is the fun part, right? And James and I, we considered a number of possible solutions, such as he could raise his rates. He didn't feel that was possible while also staying competitive. Uh, So that one was out. He could hire more staff and coaches. He didn't really have the money to do that or honestly, the time to train them. The bottleneck was already too tight. So that option was out. Third, he could train more than one athlete at a time. This was the solution he chose. Training more than one athlete during a session was the pivot he ran with. Instead of meeting with athletes individually, he put them into specialties and coached three kids at once. So he had three kids come in for the same hour who all needed help with fielding or batting or pitching, right? He was still able to give them individual attention, 
while keeping prices the same and leveraging his time better. Instead of his revenue target requiring 80 hours of coaching sessions, he got it down to requiring just 27 hours. He took this step not just hoping it would work, but knowing it would work because we analyzed the new pricing model. We looked at the time it would require, the revenue it would generate, and the overall impact it would have. It's a lot easier to make changes when you don't wonder if it will work when you know it will work, right? So those changes required focused attention, of course, and sometimes really hard decisions. Business isn't always easy. I don't want to paint some false image that it is, but the results were totally worth it. And that was absolutely true for James. And you can tell that by seeing where he was just one year later. The changes created a ripple effect that he was really proud of. Later that same year, he was in a totally different place financially, emotionally, mentally, and physically. He didn't feel the need to work obscene hours anymore. He was no longer killing himself to get more and more clients. He stopped beating himself up for having a spending problem that he didn't even have. He was making solid financial progress. He had a routine in place for paying himself and taking care of his financials. He was happier and enjoyed his business more. He had more time with his family, and he started taking better care of himself. Yes, this process will help you to pay yourself from your business. It's going to help you to know exactly what your business needs in order to do that. And it will also help you to ensure your business model is designed to deliver what you need. But the end result, I promise you, is so much more than that. It helps you create balance between your life and business. It helps you to see how one affects the other. And it puts you in control so that you can be more strategic and intentional with the decisions you're making every day. I'm going to get into the steps starting with next the next episode, but let me end today with talking about how we prepare for this session, okay? Because this is typically the first session. This is our discovery session. We go through all of this with our business clients. So let's talk about leading up to that. When our clients schedule their initial coaching session with us, they receive prep work to complete and submit prior to the coaching session. This gives us the opportunity to hear what they're experiencing, how they have things set up currently, as well as gather all of the relevant financial information that we need in order to help them. We review this information prior to the session. We typically have a number of follow-up questions that we send to the client after our initial review. Sometimes there are two or three rounds of reviews and questions, and we're going back and forth with the client. I explored this step of our process in more detail in episode 47 of this podcast. So be sure to go back and listen to that episode. I detailed out uh, the personal questions that we ask our clients. In addition to those questions for individuals and couples, we have a separate list of questions that we ask to small business owners. And I detailed those out in our newest specialty toolkit that's being released next month or May of 2024, depending on when you're listening to this episode. So if you don't want to reinvent that step for yourself, it's just one of the benefits you gain when you invest in that specialty toolkit because it's specific to coaching and supporting your small business clients. Like I said earlier, you can go to financialcoachingtoolkit.com and add your name to the wait list. Um, I am planning to have a special release price. So if you are coaching small business owners or you want to, make sure you add your name to the wait list at the bottom of that page at Financial Coaching toolkit.com. In addition, though, to the questionnaire that we send with those specific questions to small business owners, we also send two financial worksheets, one for personal and one for business finances. I am going to have these available to you for next week's episodes that you can download them. So make sure you turn tune in next week as well. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, go ahead and do that. Uh, when instructing the client to complete these two worksheets, Keep in mind, like I was saying, a lot of our clients don't separate business from personal expenses. So we simply tell them to do their best. If they were to give their best guess on whether something should be a business or personal expense, where would it go? And we tell them, we are going to review this and we're going to make sure that it ends up in the right spot. And by the end of the session, it's going to be really clear. It's going to be in the right spot. It's going to be accurately mapped out for you. But for now, just start with your best guess. So one thing to note, the financial worksheets that I'm going to share with you look like traditional budgets, one for personal and one for business. When you have prep work or spreadsheets that you give your initial clients before they ever sort of get into the coaching session, 
you want your spreadsheets to be fairly basic. It, ideally, something that looks familiar to them. And most people have attempted to complete a typical budget before. So we want to give them that. We don't want to sort of make them learn an entirely new process before they ever get to the session. Okay. We do invite them to change the categories if they need to. And we tell them over and over again, do your best do your best. Don't worry about it being perfect. It won't be. We're going to review it. Let us do our job. We just need you to get it started sort of thing, right? Once we get it back from the client, we begin to prepare for the meeting by performing our review. We organize the expenses into our three categories and we color code various things when we review it. Whether someone is a small business owner, an individual, or it's a couple coming in for their session, this review and process is the foundation of our coaching at Fiscal Fitness. So for details on this process, you can check out three different resources where I've already like explored this in detail. So I'm not going to do it during this episode because I've already done it. The first uh, is episode 39 of this podcast. The second is a lesson that is inside of our 90-day financial coaching program toolkit titled um, coaching begins before the first session. So that is one of the lessons in that toolkit. And the third is in that same specialty toolkit, and it's titled Your Financial Crystal Ball, Introducing the Plan Ahead Method. And you can find, again, our specialty toolkits at financialcoachingtoolkit.com. Um, but again, check out episode 39 of this podcast, and it will give you a really great understanding of what I'm talking about when it comes to our three categories, how we color code things, all of that. So this is the step where we are figuring out the timing of their expenses and putting structure into place for how they're going to manage each one of those categories. All of these things we are doing for them all at one time. We are separating business and personal finances. We are organizing their expenses and we're putting strategies into place to make it all easier to manage. And we are literally doing all of those things before a session even starts initially with a client. Okay. So we are doing all of that for them initially, but they're giving us the information, but we're going to be moving things all around. So that is everything leading up to the session and your thought process going into these steps. Next episode, I'm going to go through the personal and business worksheets. I'm going to give you specific guidance and thoughts on specific lines that come up on, on the worksheet, but also during the coaching session. So typical conversation aspects of it. I'll tell you what I think of it, how I talk about it, how I treat it as far as business versus personal. And we'll also explore the business worksheet as well. Then in our final episode of this series, we'll take those two plans, the business and personal, and I'll show you how we talk with the client about both of those. Okay. So that is it for this episode. Here is your reflection question. Can you see why clarity is usually the first step with every client? And can you see how this process helps us create that clarity? Can you see why clarity is usually the first step with every client? And can you see how this process helps us create that clarity initially? Again, next episode, I'm going to dive into the actual steps, uh, the nuance, the how of this process. I believe financial coaching is the best and most rewarding way to make a living. I truly love what I do. If you are ready to learn and see how to become a profitable, successful financial coach, check us out at financialcoachacademy.com to learn more about our online courses, free trainings, and our events. As always, I love hearing from you. If you have any questions for the Financial Coach Academy podcast, or if you want to share your thoughts on today's reflection question uh, with me, please go to financialcoachacademy.com forward slash podcast. And if you love this podcast, hit the thumbs up button on today's episode. Subscribe and leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to me. I'll see you next week, coach. Coach.